Good day, uh, Instructor Gaynor again discussing uh, categorical syllogisms and tests for validity. Uh, previous discussions uh, have already presented the concept of categorical syllogisms, the kind of statements that we can make, and we've also gone over uh, one explanation of a Venn diagram test for validity. Now these, uh, this next segment will address several uh, examples of Venn diagram tests for uh, validity. And I have to admit, I, I think of myself as a fairly fun guy, so I'm going to give you a few, I hope, uh, whimsical, if not controversial, examples. I'm going to begin with an E statement. No political dissidents are holders of orthodox political views. Now, you know, folks, that we could simplify this. We can just call this D for no political dissidents. We can call this our holders of orthodox political views. We can call that up because recall, as you previously uh, learned, that when we evaluate for deduction, when we're evaluating validity, we are evaluating for structure, not for content. In fact, the content does not determine validity at all. Structure does. The importance of content comes in when we're going to analyze it for soundness. When a structure is valid and the premises are undeniably true, we say that the argument is sound. So for our purposes right now, the truth or falsity of the premises don't matter. We're dealing with validity, so we're only dealing with structure. Here's my second premise. All good Americans, and it doesn't matter if you want, we can just call this A for Americans, good Americans. All good Americans are holders of orthodox political views. So we've already shown that our middle term, term is O, oh, holders of orthodox political views. Therefore, no good Americans are political dissidents. Now, to, to review once more, the mood of this syllogism, the mood is E, A, E. And the figure, you'll you recall, uh, is what we call the placement of the middle term. The middle term is the predicate in the major and the minor premise. So that would be what we call second position. So it's figure two. Now, how do we uh, diagram this particular piece? I'm going to simplify this. No DRO. Doing this partly because I can, but also partly to make plenty of space for us to do our diagram. All good Americans. Oops. That was supposed to be enough. Ah, we did it again. Anyway, so here we are. We have an EAE2 syllogism. We're going to draw our three concentric circles as before. D, O, and A. Come on. Yeah. You really have to watch out here because if you transcribe anything wrong, uh, it's kind of like making a, a clerical mistake. It may not be a mistake in your mind, but it can cause some big problems down the road. So no DRO. Recall that we shade in the area in which there are no members. 
So he said, there's no things D that are also in the class of things of. Now let's do the second one. We have an A statement. All A are of. See, so all A's that exist would be not in here. So we've shaded out all of the areas of, of A that aren't part of the class of things up. And you'll see it looks exactly like we diagrammed A statements before where we just had two circles, except we have this other one that overlaps. Don't allow that to get in your way. Uh, now finally, we ask ourselves, has the statement no A or D been diagrammed? The answer to that is yes. Because you'll notice that all of the sector of A that is D has been shaded out as having no members. So four and five are shaded. No A R D has been diagrammed. AKA, this one's valid. And I might further add, the only A's that might exist are in sector six, which is not a part of D. It only intersects with with sector up. So this one is a valid syllogism. Now as a reiteration of an earlier conversation, keep in mind, simply because this is a valid structure, it doesn't follow that the argument is sound. For example, I know plenty of people uh, who would take exception with the second premise that says all good Americans are holders of orthodox views. As a matter of fact, there are some people who believe, and some people believe with good reason, that good Americans are willing to dissent when they believe that their government is walking down the wrong path. So anyway, that's just that distinction between uh, validity and soundness. Now let's have a little bit more fun with a couple more examples. So I'm going to erase this one. I'm going to try a couple more of these. 